India overpowered China? Why did the population of India and China become so overwhelmingly large? 36 out of every 100 people in the world live in two countries. The countries are India and China. The land area of these two countries is 8.6% of the world. There must be a special reason that 36% of the population lives on this 8.6% land. The population growth rate of these two countries was equal to or less than the global average as of the 1700s when the world population began to grow in earnest. So how did India and China get an overwhelming population today? There's only one way to have a population that's equal to or lower than other countries, and that's going to overwhelm other countries after 300 years. In the base year of 1700, it already has a huge population than other countries. It was actually like that. China, which currently has about 1.4 billion people, has an estimated population of 130 million in 1700. Since then, China's population growth rate has been 0.8% every year. It's exactly the same as the average growth rate in every country in the world. India, which has the second largest population, is surprisingly 0.7%, which is lower than the global average growth. But the Indian population was already about as large as China in the 1600s. In the past, India had a larger population than China. Given the current trend of population growth, India is certain to overtake China in a few years. Again, India overtakes China and retakes the top spot in population. Even in zero, much earlier than this, India and China together made up about 25% of the world's population. In order for a country to have a large population, it must meet all three basic factors. Food that can feed many people, water that can grow this food, and land area that can accommodate a large population. China and India are the only countries on the planet that have met these three factors at the same time. It's the best place to live on the planet, around the north for ridiculous. The four major civilizations of mankind, the Egyptian civilization in the Nile River, the Mesopotamian civilization in the Tigris-Euphrates River, the Indus civilization in India, and the Chinese civilization in the Yellow River, all of which are near the north returning line. Of these, Egypt and Mesopotamia were eliminated from the conditions of large populations due to too few rivers and the rapid progress of desertification. On the other hand, it should be noted that India and China have always met these conditions, especially early rice cultivation. Rice has three times more calories than wheat. In other words, rice can feed more than three times the population compared to wheat. And because of the good climate, it was possible to do this in many areas, and I also benefited from making animals livestock early on. Moreover, rice farming requires a lot of labor due to its nature. The more children they had, the more advantageous they were for rice farming, and the increased amount of rice fed the population as much as it was revealed, thereby increasing the population. China and India were also rich in water, so many territories were suitable for farming. China has made fertile sedimentary soil with many world-famous rivers such as the Yangtze River, the Yellow River, the Hupriang River, and the Pearl River. India has countless rivers and lakes spread evenly across the country, including the Indus and Jeans rivers. The size of the territory may seem a little insufficient to accommodate the current population. But if you think about the arable land that can feed a large population, you can fully understand that the population has grown a lot. India and China have 20% of the world's arable land. The land produces 50% of the world's rice and 30% of the wheat. India, in particular, is only one-third of China's land, but 50% of the land is edible. Considering that Russia, Canada, and Australia, which have a large territory, can only farm on about 7% of the land, India's arable land is incredibly large. In addition to these three basic things, China and India had several favorable conditions for population growth. First of all, political stability is an example. China has spent much of its time under the strong centralization of the unified dynasty, although it has repeatedly divided and united. This means that we were able to avoid a war that caused a lot of loss of life, and we were able to focus on farming for a lot of time because we didn't have to be mobilized for the war. India also had the Maurya Empire and the Mughal Empire coming into power for a considerable period of time, minimizing the loss of life from the war. We were also fortunate to be able to avoid the invasion of Genghis Khan. China and India have also avoided global infectious diseases. There have been international infections, but we have not experienced such deadly infections as tests and smallpox, in which more than 30% of the population dies in a short period of time like Europe. In Europe, many people immigrated to the Americas, Africa, Asia, Australia, etc. after the 16th century. But this massive outflow of population has never occurred in China and India. 
Both countries have a preference for sons, so this also contributed greatly to population growth. This was a custom that arose from long-standing rice farming. These countries usually had more children until they had sons, so they became more populous. In India, if you have many children, you say you are blessed by God. And China also believed that if you have many children, you are blessed. This culture of the two countries is also one of the reasons for the population growth. In addition to all of these causes, the rapid development of medicine has led to the overall mortality rate being lowered, leading to an explosion in the population. These two countries have tripled their population in almost 100 years. I'll stop talking about population growth in India and China. Population is a problem, at least it is a problem, but it is not easy to balance. It's not easy to balance. Thank you for watching until the end of the video. Have a great day today.